basically the equipment necessary for orthocentesis and or intraarticular injections is basic. Uh, you want to have a 4% chlorhexidine scrub. Uh, you want saline to as a uh, as a wipe off. We don't like using alcohol because it does have some hindrance on the uh, uh, benefits of the of the uh, aseptic scrub. Um, we use clippers and vacuuming the hair. You need sterile gloves, and the sterile gloves would be used to hold your syringe and needles. Uh, needles would range anywhere from 3 8 inch to an inch and a half 22 gauge needles. You may choose to use larger needles to actually aspirate some of these products because they are viscous um, and hard to pull up in this into a needle. Um, the slides as well as the EDTA tube for uh, flu synovial fluid collection and analysis is important. Also, if you're considering culturing synovial fluid, the best method is to um, submit to the lab the synovial fluid in a blood uh, culture media and ask the lab to culture on time of arrival and 24 hours after uh, incubation. Uh, the unique products that uh, are available at this point for intraarticular uh, joint administration um, is polyglycan SA. Patients are best placed in lateral recumbency with the selected joint position uppermost and easily accessible. Sedation is typically recommended, however with experience in selected patients in certain joints, chemical restraint may be optional. The chosen joint is clipped, vacuuming the hair away, and the area is aseptically prepared. If multiple joints are selected, perform all clipping, vacuuming concurrently. Initial preps can be performed on all joints, followed by aseptically preparing each joint independently prior to joint penetration. Sterile gloves are opened and put on. The open glove package is utilized as a sterile fill to place the syringes needles to maintain asepsis. The use of an assistant allows maintenance of sepsis and presentation of the joint to facilitate needle placement. Assistance with needle attachment on the syringe and loading syringes with polyglycan SA or IRAP is also facilitated. With the joint positioned appropriately, use the hand opposite the hand used for needle placement to establish anatomical landmarks and needle insertion. Holding the syringe with the needle attached, pass through the skin, joint capsule, and synovial membrane. Attempt to avoid articular cartilage, but if encountered, back out slightly with the syringe or simply just release pressure. If bone is encountered, simply retract and redirect the needle. If synovial fluid collection is intended, aspirate in a gentle and slow manner once the needle is in the proper position. Slight adjustment and rotation of the needle is often helpful. In effusive joints, Fluid will flow easily. However, filling the hub of the needle may be the yield of fluid in less distended joints. Often more flexion with simultaneously applying digital pressure on the joint will assist fluid collection. Blood may be encountered. Iotogenic blood will not be dispersed in the fluid and a small amount is not detrimental to the analysis as intended. Frank hemorrhage is an indication to abort the aspiration. Chronic hemorrhage will be evenly dispersed and may be a component of the pathology. Effusive joints are best aspirated to remove excess fluid. 
Remo removal of excess fluid decreases the concentration of inflammatory mediators, diminishes the dilution of the injected product, and it prevents the discomfort associated with over distension of the joint capsule. The needle can be left inserted and the syringe of fluid removed for evaluation as necessary. A new syringe loaded with the polyglycan SA or IRAP is attached to the preplaced needle and infusion is performed. Otherwise, a fusion is performed with a preloaded syringe once needle insertion position is verified. Prior to withdrawal, release negative pressure on the syringe plunger to prevent aspiration of peripheral blood or contaminants.